Hello, welcome back. Mike from Canada Van Well, today we are talking about business succession planning. I'm specifically going to talk about passing the business on through the family, but this uh, is a great article that just went up on the website about everything you should think about when considering selling a business to someone. Uh, I have dealt with this a number of times, seen the scenario I'm about to walk you through more times than I care to admit. And around here, we talk a lot about, there's a lot of farms, agriculture is a big deal around here, even though the rest of the world, and even here is going to these massive farms. We still have a lot of family farms around here, uh, although they are getting bigger and less of them, which is, seems to be a problem in the agricultural world, but it's, you know, it's the modern agricultural world. So we see a lot of family businesses being passed down through the generations here in southeastern Idaho. And it's a very common topic that we talk about with financial advisors. For the record, I have no problem with you passing the business down to kids. As long as you understand that your kids almost invariably will have a different skill set and a different motivation, mo different drive than you will. And that's not their fault. Right. So as long as you go into it with eyes wide open and understanding that, you know, making sure that they actually want the business and they have the skill set to be successful with it. And you understand that you may be getting more or less for that business than you could have if you sold it on the open market. Um, I, I don't have a problem with it. I do have a problem with the way some people pass businesses down through the families, largely, in my opinion, because they're trying to avoid talking about it uh, and and because it's money within families and sometimes that is very sensitive uh, or they just don't understand what's happening or they want to avoid the topic of their own unfortunate early demise if it happens which is really the risk right so this goes all through about buy sell agreements and things. And down here, it does talk about gifting. So if you are going to pass a business down to a child, gifting some portion of that business, some owning ownership to them as they start to step into the role is a great way to decrease the value of your estate, make, make use of gifting laws, and uh, you know, kind of get that business started in the way. However, often when I see family businesses, this is the narrative I see play out that I want to make some tweaks to which is, you know, what, whoever it is, son, daughter, daughter-in-law, whoever it is, is going to be taking over the business. But I really don't, me as the owner, as the dad or mother, don't really plan on stepping away from the business. It's just at some point, they're going to run it. And likely, I'm still going to draw some type of income from that business, right? I've spent 10, 15, 20 years building this business. It was my dream. I don't just want to give it up and just like walk away, retire. I also want to make sure that junior or daughter-in-law or whoever it is that's taking over is successful unless I want to be involved in it for a while. Let's say you're in your mid fifties, you know, and you're starting to think about succession planning, but you're thinking, well, you know, I'm always going to be here, run the business and my spouse and I are going to live off in some way, the proceeds of their business. That's our, you know, that's part of our retirement plan because Ultimately, I'm selling it to my kids, so I may, there may not be some big check that comes out, right? So a lot of people often want an income stream from that business in the future. Here's how I want to change that. A buy-sell agreement with that person that transacts upon your death is a very smart way to do it to protect both your spouse and your children, right? Specifically in that, if you pass away, Earlier than expected, let's say you're 55 when you start bringing in your, your you know, child or whatever that is, and you plan on working into your 70s because that's just it's just your drive, it's your motivation. With farmers, we see this every day. If you were to pass away unexpected, let's, let's say 10 years earlier at 65, all of a sudden that was not the plan, and your spouse is now dependent on the business that they largely have not been a part of and are probably pretty worried about that you're all of a sudden out of the picture. Yes, son, daughter, whoever it is that has taken over was trained by you, 
but there is unproven success there. A buy-sell agreement there that is funded by a life insurance policy, which means when it's time for Junior to buy the farm or the ice cream store or whatever it is that they're buying from mom and dad, that purchase is funded by the fact that you passed away. It, the life insurance policy was paid for and owned by the business, but it buys mom or dad, the spouse, out of the business so that their financial security is no longer tied to the performance of a business that they don't have any interest in or experience with. Now, maybe that's not the case. Maybe they've been involved with it, right? But that's very often not the case is that they, you know, they had some other career or weren't involved in the day-to-day -day operations of the business. That protects both your spouse and your kids, right? Because you now put them in a situation where not, if you don't do this, not only they're responsible for the success of the business the mom or dad grew and loved, they're also still responsible for the financial security of the surviving spouse, which I think is too much to put on a new business owner, right? So even though you plan on staying with it, having some type of a buy-sell agreement that protects both your spouse and your kids in the event of your passing is extremely important. They often call this kind of key man insurance or things other ways, but setting up as a buy-sell agreement can be very smart in this specific situation. The other thing that I just want you to think about is when passing family businesses down in, in, in such a way where whoever is going to operate the business is financially responsible to the rest of the family in some ways. You'll see this where like, Susie's gonna take over the business, child one, Child two and three are not, but we're going to have them receiving income from the business because it's the family business. And now Susie is responsible for making payments or sharing the profits of their business with the rest of the family. Now, this is your choice, and this is just my opinion. I would, I, I would lean against it. I've just seen disaster in this area too many times in the industry where other people and other obligations are tied to the family business. In that, I would say, what is the business worth? If it's a million dollar business, and you're giving it to Susie, give the other kids a million, you know, factor that in and how you divide the estate. Now, maybe there isn't enough assets to divide the rest of it, right? Uh, in that case, you might look at some type of a key man insurance that kind of buys those kids out of the business. They have something to, to, to go on that is, um, that is not the business, right? And Susie is not required to make payments to them. That's the other one that I've seen that has just largely gone south. In my opinion is not the way I would do it. Like, you know, if you're gonna pass a business down, pass it in whole ownership to someone who that is, that is now their business and other people's financial, uh, situation is not their responsibility. So a uh, very good article up here on the website. Uh, I hope this has been informative. I will talk to you soon. Thank you.